I think I can finally forgive Frank Lloyd for that craptastic Best Picture winning film, <sighs> Cavalcade. Bounty was the 1935 Best Picture of the Year. It was also the only award that film won. It had eight nominations for a total of six categories. How does that work? Well, it was nominated for Best Director. John Ford ended up winning for The Informer. It was nominated for Best Writing of an Adapted Screenplay. Credit to James Furman, Talbot Jennings, Carrie Wilson, based on the novel by Charles Nordhoff and James Norman Hall. However, the award ended up going to Deadly Nichols, The Informer, a award he actually refused. It was nominated for Best Score, Nat W. Finston and Herbert Stoffhart, which went to, again, The Informer, Max Steiner, and nominated for Best Film Editing, Margaret Booth. It lost to Ralph Dawson for A Midsummer Night's Dream, so not The Informer. Huh. But that only makes up uh, five, so where are the other three? And how do they fit into one category? Well, that's because it's an acting category. And the category was Best Lead Actor, or Best Actor. They didn't have a supporting acting category back then. Otherwise, I don't think this would have been the case that they had three actors nominated for this award. The actors being Clark Gable for his role as Lieutenant Fletcher Christian. He won the award before for It Happened One Night. Charles Lawton for playing Captain William Bly. He won the award prior for The Private Life of Henry VIII. And newcomer French O'Tone for his role as Ensign Byam. All three of them lost to Victor McLaglen for the Informer. So it is seen that The Informer really kicked their butts this year, but they still won Best Picture, so that's saying something right there. Did it deserve it? I'll get to that in a bit. First, let's talk about what happens in the story. This is a, based on a true story, by the way. The novel is based on something that actually happened. It's about the HMS Bounty, a British ship. It's set to carry on trade relations with New Zealand. It's under the command of Captain William Bly. A very ruthless son of a bitch. No, honestly, he is a real bitch in this film. He's one of those people that believes if you make people fear punishment, that'll boost the morale, when honestly, it doesn't really work that way. He's very much against um, encouragement and reassurance, which is what the character of Fletcher Christian, played by Clark Gable, is for. He's the encouraging one. He's the nice one. He's also the captain's second in command, which means he has to relay his orders. And French O'Tone plays Ensign Byam, and he's merely just an officer who befriends Fletcher Christian. I didn't really find his role, like, that big or significant, but he was present, so I'll give him that. Obviously, in the 18th century, a sailing ship heading all the way to New Zealand, it's gonna take quite a while. And if you have a captain that's just really mean, that likes to antagonize the crew, you'd only think that mutiny is inevitable. And mutiny does happen. Eventually, Fletcher Christian's gonna have to step up because enough is enough. You already get this feeling that this guy is gonna be very bad when you see him carry out sort of his first despicable act when there's a man tied up on a pole in a rowboat outside before the voyage begins and he is given two dozen latchings. But here's the thing. The man was already dead. He was already dead from the lashings he had before. And yet he insists that the man deserved two dozen more. Because that was the punishment he seen fit. And in death, that was not going to stop it. Essentially, he forced his crew members to whip a dead body. So with a premise like that, what did I think about it? Honestly, I really dug it. I loved this movie. I really enjoyed this movie. First of all, the acting was pretty solid, especially from Charles Lawton. Although I'd consider him more of a supporting role in this movie as Clark Gable was kind of more of the lead. But for the most part, all the acting was pretty much on top. The sets were absolutely breathtaking. 
I mean, you could tell there was a big budget put into this movie, almost of $2 million, which back in sort of the Depression era, $2 million was a lot. And they made good use of it. They, they built three ships for this movie. Three ships. One of them for exterior deck shots, one of them for interior deck shots, and one of them, a slightly smaller version, for scenes of the ship moving along the shore. Kind of like a miniature, but not quite. I also read that the costumes were very much researched. The costume that Charles Lawton had to wear for his role as Captain Bly was actually made from the exact same measurements used by the actual Captain Bly. The actual person. Apparently, the place that they had their suits made from still had the original measurements. They went all the way to the original tailor um, business. As a result, Charles Lawton had to lose a lot of weight in order to fit into the outfit. Boy, was it worth it, because he owned it. As for the movie as a whole, it was just a very entertaining movie. Very much so. Everything about this plot, every, every aspect was done very well very decently. It was directed very well. Frank Lloyd, I actually felt he was actually directing this movie. I didn't feel that way with Cavalcade in comparison. I, 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 I didn't feel that Cavalcade was an actual movie, for one thing. Seriously, go back and watch my review on that. It's not good. This is a movie that if you were to watch it on TV, if you were to rent it, you absolutely will not be disappointed. This is a very entertaining movie. It doesn't really feel like there's anything being held back in terms of budget and set. It feels like they really gave this movie the best budget, the best resources that could ever be given at this time. It, it pays off. Honestly, this movie is fantastic. I put this on your bucket list. It's that good. Seriously, guys, this movie absolutely deserved to win Best Picture of the Year. It is that good. Go see it if you can. Go see if you can find it on DVD, Amazon, what have you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.